Hi, on the Woodpecker today, look at this nice sewing box that Alain gave me for Christmas last year. It has four drawers to put stuff in it, and all this is to lift my machine so I can sew while standing up. I was very happy. Before we were able to see René sewing at my mother's old sewing table. But it was so low that it was causing her back pain. So she started to sew standing up. And she loved it because she got rid of her pain. But a sewing machine on top of a bunch of books uh, is not really a good setup. So, last Christmas, I decided to make her a mahogany box to lift her sewing machine. So, the first thing to do is to take one of my mahogany panels and prepare some wood. <laughs> yes, it's really hard to believe that it's the same piece that's getting out of the drum center. After removing the scratches that the drum center left, I can rip it to the right width. Then cut four pieces out of it. Now that I have all the pieces, I can begin the joinery, which will be uncut the tails. So I mark where I want the tails, trace them, and cut them. When they are all done, it's time to make the pins. Okay, making uncut dovetails is not really fast, but I managed it anyway. But in the plan that I spent less than a minute making, I have a divider in the middle of the box. It's time to cut it. After marking the center of the bottom and top piece, I can mark where I want the dominoes mortises. With the jig I made a long time ago, it's super easy to drill those mortises. I just need to align the two lines together and cut them. When all the mortises are cut inside the box, I can drill the mortises on the divider. This is a taste of what this will look like. But I need a back to this box. And to hold the back in place, I need to cut a groove at the back of the box. I mark where I want it to be and cut it with the router. I'm extra careful not to cut the groove all the way on the two long sides.
but to have a back, nah, the divider needs to be shorter. Now it's time to cut the back. Then I need to cut a rabbit around it. Since I have all the pieces, I can try a dry fit. Ok, since I'm satisfied with it, I take it apart and sand everything that will be inside the box. <sighs> Unfortunately, mahogany is not a really sturdy wood. After my dry fit, I had this small piece that fell off. I need to glue it right away before gluing the whole box together. This glue up has nothing special. Just like any dovetails assembly, I spread glue around the tails and the pins before putting it together and adding clamps. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't find all the broken pieces after my dry assembly. So I need to fill those holes. To do so, I make my own wood paste with mahogany dust and transparent kids glue. After mixing this, I can fill all the holes. I also use the same paste around all my dovetail joinery. Now I just need to wait for this to dry. The next day, I remove the excess glue. Ah, but I'm not at all done. I still need four drawers. I'm going to use this piece of maple. After surfacing and sanding it, I rip it in three strips. Here I have two planks that will be used for the sides and backs. The thin one will be the bottoms of the drawers. The first thing I need to do is to cut a bunch of small planks from the thin plank. Then I glue them together. I leave this aside for a while because I won't need it soon. Next I cut two pieces of mahogany to the size of the drawers opening. Now that I have both pieces, I need to cut them exactly in the center. To make sure I'm in the center, I take some measurements from each side. On the table saw, I set my blade in the middle of those marks and cut all the drawers fronts. With my fence already set up, I rip all the wood I will need for the sides and backs of my drawers. Now it's time to get out the tough tail jig and cut all the pins of the drawers fronts. And in a flash, I have four fronts with pins in them. I need to take care of the sides now. The first thing to do is to cut the maple planks to the right length. Then I can cut the tails. Now that it's done, I can do the back of the drawers. And it will be made out of true dovetails.
With this jig, it doesn't take long that I have all my drawers. But I still need to cut some grooves for the bottoms of those drawers. Now that they're cut, I can take the measurements for the bottom. But before being able to do anything else, I need to sand my glue up to the right thickness. Now that it's done, I can cut the drawer's bottoms. Before going any further, I make a dry fit. Since I can see that it's perfect, I take this apart and sign my name and the date inside each drawer's bottom. I turn the bottom around and burn a pictogram of where each one should be inside the box. After all that, I can give the final sanding on all the faces which will be inside each drawer and on both sides of each bottom. And I finally can glue them together. Just like the outside of the box, uh, it's not really complicated. I spread glue everywhere and clamp them. Now I just need for the glue to dry. But I still can work on the pulls that will be in the front of the box. The ones I want to make will look like a half sewing thread spool. The first thing to do is to prepare a piece of maple and turn it on the light. When I have a round shape, I mark where I want the transitions and I'm able to turn something that looks a bit like a sewing thread spool. But I find that this is missing something. So I put this on my CNC machine and laser burn a needle and thread. It's not much, but it adds something special to the pulse. I put that back on the lathe and do the final sanding. Those two pieces will be my four pulls but I need to turn a smaller tenon at each end. After cutting the excess, I can put this inside two clamped pieces of wood. I make sure the line that I've burned on the CNC is actually on top, and after clamping this to the CNC table, I can send the command to cut the finger holes. Okay, it's not that fast, but it's still faster than carving it by hand. Now both bones have a hole in the back. Now I can finish them. So after cutting the tenons, and sanding both ends really smooth, I can go to the scroll saw and cut both sewing thread spoons in two. On my pattern, on top of having the needle and thread, I add a line to help me make this cut. Now I just need to follow this line. <laughs> One thing I can say is that it's much easier to cut where there's not a lot of wood. Yes, here I removed most of it to have space for the fingers. Now I just need to make the final touches on those poles. This is how the drawers will look like. But before gluing this in place, I have to make sure that all the drawers can enter into their openings. Now 
now that it's done, I need to cut some grooms on the side of each drawer for the slides. When all the cuts are done for one side, I move my stop and use it as a guide to push the drawer into the spinning bit. Now that I have four drawers ready, I need to cut this piece of maple into slides. The first thing I have to do is figure out the thickness of those slides and cut them. Good. I have all my slides, but I still need to give them a round shape at the front. Each slide will look just like this one. And now that I have all of them, I need to drill the holes so I can screw this to the box. After finding out the length that they should have, I cut them. This will be perfect. I just need to chamfer all those holes. After giving the slides their final sanding, I can screw them to the bottom of the opening. And try to put the drawer in place. Since it doesn't fit, I need to make some little modifications. Good. Now that it's in place, I can use this drawer as a guide to screw the slide of the next drawer. Now that I have both drawers in place, I just need to repeat all of this for the left side. Now that they are in place, I can give the final sanding on all the pieces. and I can glue the pulls in place. I'm super careful not to apply too much glue. Using the setup block and a square, I lay down the spool in place. I'm extra careful not to move the pull afterwards because mm, I don't want glue everywhere. When the pull is in place, I clamp it down and leave this aside while the glue dries. When the glue is dry, I clean everything with wood alcohol. Now I'm ready to spray the first coat of varnish. I just need to wait for the varnish to dry. The next morning it's dry and I can lightly sand the varnish. Clean all this with water and spray the second coat of varnish. The next day, I wipe sliding compound inside the drawer's grooves and on the slides. This will help a lot to make the drawers easy to open and close. And now, the small sewing box I want to give Renée for Christmas is finished. I just need to wrap it and give it to her on Christmas Day. This was the small sewing box that I made for René last Christmas. I'm super happy with the final result. I love the contrast between the mahogany and the maple. My hand cut dovetails are really not that bad. I find that hand cut dovetails always add a bit of a personal touch to a gift. Renee loves the pulls. Uh, to be honest with you, so do I.
and don't forget to come back for another episode of The Woodpecker.